What's going on YouTube? This is Sean. I am back again and in this video we are going to be working on Omega of Fortnite. And if you don't know who Omega is then uh, you better ask someone. Because that's kind of what I had to do. Because I'm not on Fortnite yet. But I saw the skin and I was like man I need to do this. Let's just jump right into this why don't we. I've already got all my patterns plotted out on this large sheet of paper. Which I use a plotter to plot out. And if you don't know what that is, then uh, you probably ask someone too. Now I've already got my patterns already cut out and transferred over to some 5mm EVA craft foam. And right here I have laid out is the pieces for the sides, back, and the top part of the helmet. And here are the parts for the face plate of the helmet. And that looks like an angry bird's face. Now when I flip these patterns over, you'll notice that I have some markings here and these are going to be for V-Groove undercuts. Now since I'm using 5mm EVA craft foam, it is a little bit difficult to do V-Groove undercuts. As you can tell right here, I accidentally cut a little too deep but that's going to be okay because I'm going to apply some contact cement and that's all going to get glued together anyways. And some of you guys are asking, how do I do V-Groove undercuts? Well, if you watch carefully, I'm using a Sharpie marker to draw my lines. And then what I'll do is I'll cut one straight line. And then on the other edge of the Sharpie, I will cut an angle cut. And that will give me a pretty good V-Groove cut. You don't want to cut too deep like I did. And as for the center of the forehead pieces, I just scored the material so that way I can fill in with some hot glue later like I'm doing right here now I'm using low temp hot glue because it takes a shorter time period for the hot glue to cool down and now that my contact cement has dried to a tack it's time to merge the center together and then I'm going to close up all the v-groove undercuts just like this and then once you have it all glued together it should look something like that so far so groovy right so let's move along to the forehead section i'm gonna go ahead and merge the center together and then i'm gonna take the center of the forehead right there and merge that together and notice where i filled in with the hot glue it gave me an inverted bevel which i wanted to do and then i'm going to spread these uh let's say wings apart and carefully line up the edges together and then these lines right here were both cut with an inward angle cut and that would give me a bevel look once I have everything all glued and pressed together. I'm just about done with the forehead section and I'm starting to dig it. Now it's time to add this uh, lower brown thingy. Brow thingy. And then notice I cut that edge right there in an inward angle cut. I forgot to transfer my hash marks over which I really didn't do for much of the build but this part was quite important because I needed to get it centered out so I took the paper template and I folded it in half and I marked the center and then I'm going to align it in the center and carefully press everything together using the surface of my table to make sure that everything is nice and smooth and on there just like that. And now I'm pretty much done with the front portion of the helmet. I'm going to add some lining to the uh, mouth plate. And here are the pieces for the sides, the back, and the top part of the helmet. These patterns, they do look kind of weird, but they do belong together. And uh, I don't have any hash marks, but I should have put some down. But that's okay, I'm just going to wing it like I kind of do everything else. And notice these edges, they're both cut in inward angle and this will give me a 45 degree bevel ish look now I don't cut my angle cuts in 45 degrees because that would make it 90 and that's not what I was going for I'm kind of going for like a 45 degree bevel uh, thingy effect right here and then here is the lower back piece now I did cut a V group cut right there and I did a slice which I did fill in with some hot glue and this will give me a little thingy effect that's on the back of the helmet which you will see later on in the video now when I glued everything together I noticed that this back piece stuck out just a little bit further so that meant I'm going to have to go back and trim that piece off and um, go back and fix the template just a little bit but 
no biggie is still looking like something that I'm aiming for this helmet is quite weird looking it's pretty odd looking but anyway this is the top of the dome and I did cut the lower edge in an outward angle which will join onto the rest of the bottom piece and if I had some hash marks um, this would have probably been a whole lot easier but you know I just kind of wing it hopefully things work out and since I'm working with foam it's a little more forgiving because you can stretch some areas you can push pull compress you, well, you know what I mean foam is such such easy to work with and now it's time to do the other side of the helmet I'm going to mirror these pieces and do everything the same except for mirrored because duh it's the other side and uh, you want to make sure all your edges and your seam lines are nice straight and clean and pressed together because last thing you want to do is have your helmet fall apart on you and notice that uh, this piece right here the lower back piece it did hang over a little bit too so yeah I do have a problem with the template but I will fix that before I release it alrighty then I've already got both sides assembled and everything is looking legit except for that uh, little tail end in the back I'm gonna take a pair of scissors and snip off those excess material because I don't really need it alright so I've already applied contact cement to both the edges and I want to make sure all my joints line up nicely and I'm going to carefully attach the uh, the edges together since I can't really use the surface of my table due to how oddly this helmet is formed but as far as the top part the dome I could do that but this back piece right here it's a really odd shape it's unique looks kind of cool though I, I really I really dig it I mean I, I dig it alrighty tidy I've already got the back piece assembled now it's time to attach the mouthpiece which I did cut the edge right there and an outward angle cut both edges actually outward angle so that way when I join them together it does this uh, inverted bevel and the the I guess the cheek part of the area kind of just glues on top of the top side piece just like that and now it's time to put on the uh, uh, forehead but before I do that I'm going to add some extra foam right here just to give the uh, I don't know let's call them antlers a little bit of thickness because I'm using five millimeter craft foam and I wanted a little bit thicker right there and I'm going to apply some contact cement to the top of the dome the edge right there and I'm going to apply some contact cement into the inside of the uh, the forehead or the lower part of the antlers I guess you can call them that I don't know horns yeah let's just call them horns because we're not working on deers now I'm going to reinforce the lower piece of the eye and I'm gonna cut some strips and then I'm gonna glue it on there now it may be a little too thick which it is I'm going to eventually cut some pieces off trim it down just a little bit so I can see because um, you know seeing is a thing and everybody apparently needs that now I'm going to carefully align the the uh, horns the forehead to the rest of the helmet and glue everything down and so far so groovy and I'm digging what I'm cooking hope you're digging it too notice I did trim down the eye area just a little bit and now that I have everything assembled it's time to clean up the edges and um, the, the sides right there a little bit so that everything is a little smoother and pleasant to the eye when using a Dremel tool like this you want to be nice and steady kind of take your time now it's time to fill in that little piece back there which looks like that and we're done with it now I can take some caulking and clean up that back edge a little bit which I kind of did but I thought I got it on camera which I didn't now I went and sprayed on two coats of Plasti Dip and once it dried it looked pretty cool but the face shield needs to be gunmetal or silverish and I painted about two coats of that on there there's a lot of overspray but that's okay because I'm gonna take some black and I'm gonna paint over it with a paintbrush now I wanted to use gloss black but 
I didn't have any. So I used matte black, which was kind of cool. I mean, I can always go back and paint over matte black with gloss black. A lot easier than painting over gloss black because it's so smooth. And now the eyepiece right here does have some areas that are lit it in yellow lights, but I figured I'm just going to go and paint it yellow and just not do the whole light thing, which does look kind of cool. I mean, it does give me the effect that I'm aiming for so yeah there you have it now according to my reference picture he's actually got some amber ish yellow lights not bright yellow but this is all i had to work with so yeah my genji helmet is finally done i meant to say omega but they do look alike if you ask me now if this is what you're into then check the links in the description down below it's going to take you to the templates and don't forget to check out the other links to my amazon shop and all the other good stuff and uh yeah don't forget to like comment and share subscribe to this channel if you haven't already subscribed and i'll see you guys in the next video